kick off this most holy week um, with our Palm Sunday worship service. As always, everything you need to know will be projected for you behind me here on our wall. Our team praise team will be leading us through our songs. We'll be concluding our, our Our Father Applied teaching series, and at the same time kicking off our new teaching series for Holy Week, Resurrection Progression. Um, I believe that's it for our service notes, so I pray that God bless each of you as you worship Him this day. I invite you to stand as we join with our teens in singing our opening song, O Come to the Altar.
continue our worship this day, friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. I do invite you to join me now as we silently reflect upon our past week, thinking all those sins we know and those sins we don't know, to God our Father. Together now we cry out to our Lord. Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove the evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Now friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as the called and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated for our scripture readings. The first reading today is taken from Acts 14, 22, and 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Colossians 1, yeah, Colossians 1, starting at the 11th verse. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. All right, we'd like to invite our children up front now for our children's message. Morning, friends. Thank you so much for coming up to the front. How are you guys today? Good, this Palm Sunday. I brought some things with me to share our message today. If you guys are a fan of this sport, this is a good week, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so what do I have here? A baseball glove. So if I have a baseball glove, then what do you expect to be in my baseball glove? Yeah. yeah well, close. I have a fruit cup. <laughs> fruit cup, right? Might come in handy if, I, uh, if, I'm, if I'm hungry later, right? I have a beautifully wrapped present here. What would, what would you expect to be in this beautifully wrapped present? Or what would, what would you expect to be a good gift in a box this size? That one's going to be all right. No. A toy car, okay. What do you think originally came in this box? 
shoes, yeah. <laughs> Clothes maybe, okay. Should we see what's inside? It's not a fruit cup. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's a list of chores. <laughs> okay. Make bed, feed pet, get the mail, water plants. Those are good, good chores. Okay. How about this one? We're going to be celebrating... Uh, we're going to be celebrating this in a week, right? Anyone ever collect Easter eggs? Kind of like this? Yeah? What is usually inside of one of those Easter eggs? Or what, what would you expect to find inside of, of a plastic Easter egg like this? Yeah. Chocolate, maybe? Anything else? Coins, maybe? Some money? <coughs> Jelly beans? Yeah, you want to open it up for us and see what's inside? What's that? Do you know? It's spinach! <laughs> spinach! Spinach is good and healthy, right? Wasn't planning on eating that. <laughs> and you can tell it's been inside of a plastic egg overnight. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes things happen that we don't expect. It's, mm. <laughs> I will not do that next service. <laughs> sometimes things happen that we don't expect, right? It's a good, good thing to talk about expectations on Palm Sunday. And I would like you to get your palm branches out. Congregation, we're going to ask you to participate in this, in this too. I'm going to quickly share with you again the story of Palm Sunday. And every time I say the word Hosanna, which means praise him, let's shake our palm branches. Okay? So I'm going to say Hosanna. All right. Good job. So it was the week before Easter, just like today, and Jesus was going into a town called Jerusalem. And as he was going there, there were some people that might have expected him to ride in on a big strong horse or a chariot but instead jesus came in on a little colt like a like a small donkey and when the people saw him they shouted hosanna right and they put their coats on the ground to honor him and they shouted hosanna and then uh they well it was like a parade is basically what it was except they didn't pass out candy they shouted Hosanna, right? You guys catch on quick. <laughs> you see, they expected Jesus to be an earthly king that might save them from the people that were ruling over them, the Romans. But Jesus knew that they needed something better. They needed something more. He came to be their forever king, right? Jesus didn't be a, a, wasn't the type of king that wore a crown. He was the type of king that served us, right? He served us by dying on the cross because that's what we needed. We needed forgiveness. And then he rose again from the dead so that, we might, so that he might give us new life in him and all of those people there. Jesus does some unexpected things, doesn't he sometimes? Sometimes when we pray to Jesus, uh, we might ask him for something, and he might do something that we don't expect. But, you know, that's why this book here is so incredibly important that we read it or either we have our parents read it to us because it reminds us that even when Jesus does things that we don't expect, he always does what's best for us because he knows what we need. So that at the end of every single day, even if the day doesn't go as planned, we can still shout, Hosanna, right? All right, friends, let's go ahead and thank God for Jesus, for being our forever king, that we might trust in him. And congregation, we ask you to join us in this prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thanks, for knowing what I need thanks for knowing what I need and serving me, and serving me by, dying on the cross by dying on the cross and rising again. Help me to remember you are good. 
even when you work, even when you work. In, unexpected in unexpected ways. Help me to love and serve others, as you have done for me. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up, friends. Hosanna. Praise him. As the kids head back and our praise team heads up, invite you to stand as we join in the singing of our next song, Great Things. in the middle of the message, so we're going to be prepared this day.
I need to tell you, there's some days I just want to cry. And there's other days I just wonder why. And I ask, how long? And by the end of the day, I am just saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. But why? Well, look around, right? Every day, whether you, you watch the news, read a, a newspaper, scroll your social media feeds, or type a, in a web address and hit enter, it's the same thing that dominates the headlines. Evil. The war in Ukraine. Evil. Potential war crimes committed by Russia. Evil. Mass killings. Evil. Torture. Evil. Horrible abuses inflicted on people. Random attacks of violence. Physical sexual abuse of women and children. Evil, evil, evil. Disease, sickness, poverty, persecution, murder in all its forms. Evil. And the list can go on and on and on. But for me and so many others, it all just produces the same result. Heartache. The same thought. How much longer? How much longer, Lord, must we suffer? Must we see? Must we endure? Evil, evil, evil. It's always before us. And knowing that it's always before us, we need to take a few moments and address the one driving this evil train throughout humanity. Satan. How often do we talk about him? Not very often. Why don't we want to talk about him? Is it because we don't want to give him the time of, of day? Are we uh, afraid to address who he is? We shouldn't be. So we got to establish something right off the bat here with Satan. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like me. He does not like believers in Jesus. And we, we touched briefly on this last week. But friends, Satan truly does not like those who belong to Jesus. And you know why? It's because he doesn't. He does not belong to Jesus. Satan is God's enemy. The only enemy of God is Satan. The evil. Satan originally was a holy angel. But he led this rebellion against God. And he got his butt whooped. He lost. And because of that, to this day, he remains opposed to God and to all that is good. So now, out of arrogance, out of rage, and out of spite, Satan seeks to claim God's good creation as his own. And create his own kingdom. The goal to do this is to deceive and destroy the human race. To deceive and destroy man and woman. So he seduced Adam and Eve. It's been going on since those first bites of the fruit that brought evil into the world. You probably know the story well of Genesis 3 of the fall. If you don't, go back and check it out. It speaks perfectly to why the world is the way it is today. You see, this evil that had come into the world, God had hidden originally from man's eyes until that dreaded bite. But why? 
wily Satan. He seduced Adam and Eve into captivity. He made them his allies. And subject to condemnation in hell forever. In Genesis 3.22, it says this. The Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Us referring to the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the land. Evil was already here after Satan fell. God was protecting his people from seeing this, from being part of it. But they wanted to be like God. They wanted to be like him, have power like him, and do things like him. So they were deceived by the evil one. And because of having done evil now by disobeying God, Adam and Eve knew both good and evil. And because of that, guess what? So do we. We know good, right? not (laughs) we know good (laughs) and we know evil yeah Yeah. we we see evil we hear evil we do evil we deal with evil friends we too have been seduced into captivity We've made ourselves allies with the evil one. And we do it over and over and over and over again. Truth is, we are dead in our sins following the ways of the world. Truth is, we are dead in our sins following the prince of evil. Truth is, we are dead in our sins of working in disobedience against our God. Truth is, truth hurts. But here's the thing. We can't be afraid to address it. We we can't be afraid to say it. That the evil one does everything he can to keep us captive in our sins, in our evil thoughts, in our evil actions. So, So what can we do, right? What can we do to combat this evil that we face? What can we do against this evil that we succumb to? The same thing we've been doing the last five and a half weeks. Crying out, our Father. Our Father in heaven, deliver us from evil. When we pray this in the Lord's Prayer, we are asking our Father in heaven to rescue us from all evil, including that evil one, Satan. So let's break this down a little bit more. Maybe we could say we're going to apply it. Deliver us from evil. Okay, Deliver us from evil means we are asking God our Father to spare us from the evils of life, such as poverty, sickness, injury, heartache, and miseries. That's what we're asking for. And at the same time, we are asking the Father to help us endure the troubles that come upon us and to keep us in the faith. So here's the thing with this. We are asking God to help us endure the evil that comes into our lives because we know it's there. You guys know it as well as I do. The evils that are there in our lives, they come, they show their ugly face, they weigh us down. And Satan knows what he's doing, and so he uses these to try and pull us and and push us further and further away from the truth. Because if God really loved you, then you would not have to deal with this. It's not really your fault 
God did this. So friends, we know that, that, that this evil is, is real, and we know that we can't deal with it on our own. If you don't know that yet, you'll learn. You can't deal with it on your own. We, we can't escape it, so we pray that our Father deliver us from evil, that our, our Father keep us faithful through all of this. The first reading that, that Tony read for us Today, Luke writes of, of Paul and Barnabas in Acts 14.22. It said this, Paul and Barnabas returned, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. It's right there. Through many tribulations, through pressures, through hardships, through miseries, through attacks of the evil one, we must enter the kingdom of God. And so for all of us, this is part of the journey to heaven. So how do we get through this? Oh, but of course, we can't do it on our own, right? So through the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us through our struggles, our evil things we're dealing with, our miseries. The Holy Spirit helps us through keeping us faithful unto death. But you've, you've probably learned, too, that you just can't go it alone with just you and the Holy Spirit. Maybe for a while. That's why Paul and Barnabas here, they had returned to Lystra and Antioch. To strengthen the faith, to strengthen the souls of those they had already shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with. And they encouraged them to continue in the faith together. You see, you need it too. The support of other disciples of Jesus walking through this life with you. Loving you, encouraging you, crying with you. Where do you find that? Sometimes you find it in the brothers and sisters in Christ that gather with you on Sunday mornings in a building. For others, they find it in homes where they gather for small groups or Bible studies or, or missional communities. But we all find it here. We all are able to find it in the Word and we all know where it comes from. It comes from our Lord. Our Lord. Our Lord who is faithful. Right? So, so through all the miseries, through all the evil, the Lord is faithful to you. Another one of those verses that Tony read for us. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, The Lord is faithful. Did you hear that? Okay. The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. The Lord will. And here's the thing, friends. If the Lord says something, it actually happens. He's the only one who's ever kept promises. Perfectly. Time and time again, the Lord has been faithful. He's reliable. He's trustworthy. He delivered his people through the exodus. He brought his people into the promised land. He sent the Messiah. He did all of this. He delivered on all of these occasions. And guess what he's going to continue to do? He's going to continue to deliver on what he says. So if the Lord says he will establish you and guard you against the evil one... Guess what he will do? He will guard you and establish you against the evil one. How? Well, there's a few more verses that we didn't look at with Tony's reading today. Verses 4 and 5, it says this. Paul writes, We have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord lead your hearts into a full understanding and expression of the love of God and the patient endurance that comes from Christ. So once again... 
Paul is talking to the Thessalonians here, teaching them, again, about what they've heard about the truth and love of Jesus Christ. So they have confidence here now that the Lord is in you, that you're about doing these things that we have taught. And you're doing it together. It's, it's through the body of Christ that the word of God is proclaimed. It's through the body of Christ that the word of God is taught in truth. It's the word of God proclaimed and taught in truth. That's the way that God guards us against the attacks of the evil one. So that means this. Other churches say you could take some of this and you can throw it away. You can't. You cannot do that. Friends, this is where God guards you and me against the attacks of the evil one. So we're praying, Lord, deliver us from this evil. And not only is this a cry to, to keep us faithful to him and to free us from this present evil age, but it's also a cry out to him asking us to take us home. To be with him when we die. Death is the final reality of the evil of this world. Past week, we, uh, 14 years, I didn't say we celebrated, we remembered mom, 14 years ago she was killed in a motorcycle accident this past Wednesday. It still stinks. And, and this, this death is a result of sin. Death is something that, that you and I, we see every day. Death's not good. It's not And so we cry out to God, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from death. And you know what he does? He does it, right? We ask him to take us home to heaven, to be with him where there is no evil, where there is no pain, where there is no suffering, where there is no war and senseless killings, where there is no greed and arrogance, where there is no hatred and racism. Lord, deliver us from this evil place. And he does. Paul says in Galatians 1, Christ gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be the glory forever and ever. Friend, I want to read these words again. I want you to hear these words. I know you need them because I needed them. So listen again. Christ gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. There is no other answer. There is no other answer in our world today for you and me. Christ alone delivers us from this present evil age. So today, as we rejoice and celebrate with other Christians around this world, we start Holy Week once again. And we're going to take the time now to follow and reflect on on Christ's resurrection progression that delivers us from evil. It begins today, where Jesus Christ humbly entered into Jerusalem, that holy city, riding on the back of a donkey with one task, a rescue mission. The people were so enamored So excited to welcome the king who had come to deliver them, to rescue them. They sang songs. They danced in the streets. They waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We join in rejoicing in he who frees us from Satan's tyranny. You see, this week, friends, when the effects of evil overwhelm you, cry out. Cry out, Lord, deliver us. 
When you see the atrocities of the nation and the world because of evil, cry out, Lord, deliver us. When you personally don't feel like you can deal with it any longer, cry out to the Lord, deliver me. All the while, open your Bible. We say we're going to do it. We know we need to do it. So just do it. Open the Bible and see the comfort he provides. Pick up the phone and call a friend. Don't text. Call a friend who's strong in the faith, who you know will listen to you and encourage you. Read a devotion, serve someone in need, cry out and allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and through you. Just a couple more things. I want to share these words that Paul wrote to Colossians in chapter 1. And I, and I, I want you to listen to them and allow them to seep into your heart here. Paul says this, May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered you from the domain of darkness and transferred you to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom you have redemption and forgiveness of all your sins. Friends, this cry to deliver us from evil is answered this week. We'd love to have you join us in the coming days for this worship of Jesus through the resurrection progression and see that through it all, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Father through Jesus Christ rescues you from every evil of body and soul, every evil of possessions and reputation. And when your last hour comes, he gives you a blessed end and takes you from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts, our minds on the Deliverer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand, friends, and join me now as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we go to our Lord in a time of prayer. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you are the deliverer of us from all evil. We thank you for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to be that sacrificial lamb for us and all mankind. He willingly took our sins upon his back, delivering us from evil and winning for us eternal freedom and victory with you in heaven. For such a great gift, Father, we thank you. And Lord, we know what Jesus did we cannot do. He resisted the temptations of the devil. He lived a perfect sinless life for us. 
So we humbly ask that you would day in and day out graciously deliver us from evil and protect each and every one of us from the attacks of the evil one so that he would have no power over us. Lord, let your love have its way with us. Lead us to expect no self-interest and reward, but to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, and to serve those in need. Father, put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let forgiveness reign between each of us, even as your Son, Jesus Christ's blood, covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, uphold civil authority and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and community. Help them steadfastly to pursue the cause of justice and protect life from beginning to natural end. Guard all first responders. Protect all those who defend here or abroad. Bring a quick end to all wars and violence and bring a peace beyond all understanding. Lord, we know that you are always at work. We ask that you humbly fill us with your spirit, your Holy Spirit, giving us courage and confidence to step out and join you in extending love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy to all your children. You've done the heavy lifting, the dying and the rising. Empower us now to cast fear aside to love those neighbors as we love ourselves. Loving Lord, we pray that you bless this in all your churches, that all those churches would remain fixed upon the truth of your word, that they would faithfully proclaim it from Genesis to Revelation, and that through it all, your son Jesus Christ's death for our salvation may be the entire focus. That this gospel truth will be proclaimed and lived out until he comes again. Father, we pray for your church here with her memorial in River Falls. We ask that you continue to be with your children as they live their lives in service to you. That you be with the board of directors as they continue to seek your guidance to lead your church in a way that reaches out to all your children in love and mercy and grace. Now, in healing, Father, you have the ability to heal all manner of diseases. And so we ask that you continue to be with all those who suffer from illness and pain, whether it be of body, mind, or soul. We especially lay at your feet today, Sam and Melissa, Brooklyn and Susan, Diana and Jenny, Joyce and Kathy, Timothy, EJ, Cody and Gino, Dave and Mary, Emily and Christina, Audrey, Boyd, Ricky and Tammy, Arlene, Georgia, William, Paul, Pam, Susan, Al, Lee, Mara, and Christopher. Father, grant them patience during this time and restore them to health according to your good and gracious will. Father, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you that you have sent your Son not in wrath, but in mercy. Now as we enter into this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna. Save us now in the passion, in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and gladly send us out with this message into a world who needs this hope and grace every day. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Now Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, you see this blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we send ourselves out with singing Reckless Love.
message to send us out into a world that needs to hear this. There is nothing that God won't do to get to those who need his love and mercy and his grace. A few quick announcements for you. Um, there's an opportunity for our women and our youth to serve uh, through frozen meal creating for Servant of the Shepherd. This is a creation meal all on, on April 30th. Any questions about that? Talk to Sandy Brace or to Lauren Jensen, and they will help you um, answer those questions. BBS registration already is almost uh, opening. It opens on uh, Easter Sunday, so next week, Resurrection Sunday. Be watching for that if you have pre-K up to 5th, 6th grade. I think 6th grade, I believe that is. If you want to help with that, please talk to Chad. Uh, Holy Week dates. We can go forward one more. I think we have a screen for that one. Yes. So our resurrection progression now continues into... Um, Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, 1 o'clock and 6.30 services. At that 6.30 service, we're celebrating uh, four young students that will be receiving their first communion. Uh, we're excited for that. Uh, Good Friday, 1 o'clock and 6.30. Um, that's a tenebrae service at both, so the lights will be going out, candles will be extinguished, um, and then the tomb will be closed. And then you're invited back on Resurrection Sunday, uh, 6 o'clock worship service outside. Yes, I know it's going to be chilly, but it's still going to be um, outside, um, and then 8 o'clock traditional, and 10.30 contemporary service. Um, so those are the opportunities you have to progress um, this Resurrection Progression Week. That's it. So as always, thank you to our servants up top and down below for using your gifts and talents uh, to serve Christ and His church this day, and to our, our ever-growing uh, team, praise team. What a blessing. Can you guys? Yeah. One thing I love about what we've always done here since I've been able to, God called me here, is using as many gifts and talents of all ages of our kids. Um, uh, young kids, big kids, little kids, everybody from kids on up to adults. So, so thank you guys for taking the time and sharing your gifts with us. That's it. God's richest blessing, friends. God be with you as you step out knowing that he is delivering you from evil every single moment of every single day. And as you prepare your hearts for this resurrection progression week. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.